Greetings, I'm Brian from RC Work Boat Haven. Welcome to part six of the gaff cutter build. In part six, we're going to put up the standing rigging. We're going to make some turnbuckles. We're going to create a suit of sails. We'll create mast hoops and rings. We're going to attach the sails onto the spars in the rigging. Got a lot of work to do and it should be interesting. Thanks for watching. In part five, we brought the cutter up to this stage. The rig is just held up with temporary uh, twine and we have patterns for sails. They've all been carefully cut to make sure they fit the spars and the rigging. So now I'll remove these patterns and we can build ourselves a set of sails. I went to a fabric store. A light cotton twill would be the way to go because the, uh, the grain is very fine on it. There's a close weave to this and it's quite light. It feels like about five ounces and it is an all natural material, which is what I'm looking for. And it's the right color. So I have here in my hand, a miniature of the mainsail for the cutter. I've got my hand holding on to the peak and my other hand holding on to the tack. Now I'll pull it. Look at how that wrinkles. Look at how it stretches. Now I'll hold the throat and I'll hold the uh, clue and pull it. Look at how that stretches. But if I hold the leech, which is the tight grain direction, very little stretch. And that's what we want. So when the wind hits the main part of the sail, we want it to make the shape of a, an air, airplane wing, if you can imagine that, sort of like an airfoil. So we can pick the tightest grain in any part of the material just by giving it a stretch. But that's a little heads up. So let's get started. <laughs> I put this material in the washer and dryer and then ironed it so it's fairly flat and if the, if the material shrinks it would have done some of the shrinking already. So this will be my leech. I've put weights all the way along the outside of the mainsail to hold it down in, in place. And now with a pencil I'm going to carefully mark the edge of the sail and I'm using a sharp pair of scissors to cut down that line. And here's our cotton mainsail. And here's the outer jib, and I've set the uh, leech of the sail along the end grain, and I have marked it with a pencil. So now I'll cut this out. So here's the inner jib. I know that my tight grain is running in this direction, so that will be my leech. So I've measured 11 inches in and 11 inches in. So there will be some waste here, but I know that I've got a, a nice tight leech. So now I'll mark this and cut it. So using the same edge that I've just cut to make the inner jib, I'm going to put the mainsail back on and cut another main, main out of this canvas and then I've got a spare. Now this is an all natural material and it's tightly woven. With the scissors I got a very clean cut with very few hairs and threads. So I want to protect the exterior edge of these sails and I'm going to take advantage of the fact that it is all natural. So the next step is to glue the perimeter of these sails. I had enough canvas material to make up two complete sets of sails. So I'm using uh, Gorilla Indoor Outdoor type 2 glue which is water resistant and I've put some in a shot glass. I added a drop or two of water to make it the same consistency as paint. 
I've covered the table with plastic and I'm protecting the ends of my weights here with a bit of scotch tape. I've got a brush about one half an inch wide and I'm taking the brush and I'm putting a nice even layer of glue all the way along. I've done the main sail here. At the end I'll just remove the weight and then replace it. So now it's been about an hour and a half. The first side has set up. So now I'm going to do the other side the same way. And here's side two with the seam all glued up. Now the corners of the sails will have an eye and that will be crimped into place. So I want to strengthen up these corners in the traditional way. So in each corner I've made a mark and I've got a strip of cotton fabric. I have a small amount of wood glue and I've added about one drop of water. So I put glue up to the mark. Set on the patch. Completely saturate the top with glue and place on a weight that has scotch tape on the bottom so it won't stick. And now in the same way, I'll go around to all the corners on the sails and reinforce them. So here we are about 24 hours later. The uh, reinforcement at the ends have, has all set up. And I have noticed that the Gorilla Glue seems to have lightened up a little bit in color. So the uh, corner reinforcement is fairly flexible. Definitely glued properly. So I'm ready now to get my scissors and cut these patches off to the correct shape. I also notice here that the uh, the glued edge will still fold up quite nicely. It's still it's still quite flexible. Now to start off putting eyes into these sails, I'm using a vise which gives a, a good solid um, surface to hammer on. And I'm using a, uh, uh, looks like a nylon block. I have a small punch that's used in leather crafting and it makes about a 2.5 millimeter hole. I have a jib here and I'm just doing this by eye. I'm leaving a quarter of an inch on either side. Now I'm using a small eye that's also available from leather crafting suppliers. Now I'm pressing in the eye in the same direction that I punched the hole. I have a small anvil like tool shaped like a dish. And then I pick up a small flange tool, set it over the end, and now hammer it with a small hammer. Just a tap and that flattens everything out here and we've got a, an approximately slightly over a two millimeter hole which I can put wire through or string. 
So now I'll go around and do all the corners of the sails in the same way. And now just by eye, I'll round the end off with the scissors. Just like that. This is the luff of the mainsail. I'm going to be using 11 mast hoops to secure the luff to the mast. From eye to eye here, from the tack up to the throat, measures 340 millimeters. So I'm measuring 34 millimeters to make 10 equal spaces. And now I'll put an eye in each location. Here's the luff of the mainsail. So now on the rest of the sails, where I need eyes, I'll use approximately the same uh, spacing at uh, 34 millimeters. Then everything will look a bit more consistent. So hopefully this method will stand up to the weather and uh, maybe the odd little splash of water. Uh, it's a uh, live and learn with this project. And I am hoping that they will set fairly well when they're rigged onto the uh, boat. In order to get the sails up on the boat, I now have to deal with the standing rigging. I've got some synthetic line here. It's, it's got a, a paracord appearance to it, but it certainly doesn't have much stretch. The diameter of the line is four millimeters, so I think the proportions are about right. And I'll try this line. I can always replace it in the future. I'll be crimping the ends together. I want to be able to tighten or loosen the rig and adjust it and so on, and account for any stretch. So I will be making up some turnbuckles next. Something strong enough to maybe hold uh, 50 pounds of weight would be about right. So uh, I'll show you what I'm doing with that. So in my hand, I've got a one quarter OD brass tube with a 0.014 wall. The tube is cut to one and one half inches. At the one inch point here, I've drilled a one eighth hole right through. Now here in my other hand, I've got a three millimeter bolt with a three millimeter lock nut on the end. I've sanded the inside of the tube at the ends and I've sanded the lock nut on a stone so that it's got a rough surface right here where my finger's moving. Now using a mallet, I'm going to tap this lock nut in just below the surface of this brass tube and then I'll add a bit of super glue to it. There we go, so I've got a really tight fit and I've got the, the bolt in fairly good alignment. So now I'll put a tiny bit of super glue right in that surface there. Now the nut has been super glued into the tube. I'm now going to bend over the tube against the tapered part of the lock nut. And I'll just do that with a small hammer. And now I've placed the drill bit through the hole so that I've got the, uh, the turnbuckle level and I'm going to tighten it down in the vise. So now I'll take this over to the drill press and put a 3 16 hole in it. So I've made seven turnbuckles with a 3 quarter inch take up and they're all the same.
So now I have the standing rig up. I decided to have the rig so that the sails and sail booms are all independent. That way in the future I could display the model like this or remove the sails and still have it on display. But it's, uh, it's worked out fairly well. I've installed a stay on the underside of the bowsprit and it's secured with a half a hook so this line can be removable. And it goes down to the eye. I did a past video called How to Make Turnbuckles for Your RC Boat Model. In that video, I describe in detail how to crimp these lines and how this little end piece was made and attached onto the uh, turnbuckle uh, screw. So uh, take a look at that if you want more details on the rigging. The only thing different about these turnbuckles and the ones I did in that video is the actual body of the turnbuckle. So here's the inner jib stay. Port and starboard, I have two turnbuckles and two stays. I've through bolted picture hangers and they form the chain plates. I may paint those black, but it works out very well and they're very strong. Up top, I've crimped on the lines here, done in the same way. To make the gaff angle adjustable, I've made a small turnbuckle here with, with about one half an inch of take up. So that will be attached up here to the mast later when I'm fitting the sails. So I plan to have the standing rigging all to the right tension. Not overly done, but plenty tight. The boat will easily swing. This way and that way, I can, I can lift it up just like this easily. So I've got plenty strong um, support here. And to transport the model is to be able to collapse the rig. So here's how it's done. Remove the hat. I lift up slightly and pull out the pin on the main mast and lay it ahead like that. Next, I pull out the pin on the bowsprit and move it in. Now I can unhook the stay up forward from that half eye. Now the bowsprit will come out of the hole and the rig, sails and all, will just fall down onto the deck like this. then I'll be able to easily carry the boat. So now I go to the beach and I'm going to assemble the rig. Pick up the bowsprit, pick up the mast, put the mast in position, slide the bowsprit in through the hole, Connect the bowsprit stay. Put the pin into the bowsprit so now it's secure. Take the mast, lift up slightly, and slide in the pin. So now I have the sails up and fastened to the rigging and the spars. I think I have a fairly good uh, set to the sails. It feels right at this point. The main sail has a nice body to it, fills out nicely here. The glue that I used to reinforce the edges of the sails has lightened up quite a bit over the past few days. So it really is hardly noticeable at this point. Now I'll try to show a few details of how I rigged the sails onto the lines and the spars. 
I changed the uh, ends of the jib booms a little bit to make it simpler. I had some brass tubing and I fitted over the end of the spar and I drilled holes in it so that I could uh, put lines through it and attach the tack of the uh, sail. On the far end I drilled a hole and the boom now can just swing freely on the shaft of the turnbuckle. I can still adjust the turnbuckle by removing this nut and bolt right here and turning it. So everything now with the sails is uh, independent of the standing rig. And I did the same thing here on the uh, inner jib boom. It can be adjusted in the same way. The jibs are fastened on at the peak with 1.5 millimeter line and tied here and here. It loosely fits the uh, forward stay all the way along. The luff of the jibs is fastened onto the standing rigging with a small ring made of cord. I made these little rings which, were, which are a loose fit by getting 1.5 millimeter cord and tying a reef knot and then tightening it with uh, two wrenches. Then I put super glue right in the center of the knot. After the super glue set up, I used these clippers and cut it off like this. And so I've got a fairly nice lo loose and neat fit for all of my, uh, my jib eyes. On both jibs I added an extra eye just forward of the original one to help me pull the foot of the jib back. I used the same method to lash on the uh, head of the mainsail onto the gaff. Seems like a nice fit. And up top I have a small brass turnbuckle that lets me adjust the angle here on the gaff. And I also attach the mast rings onto the sail here using the same method and the clippers. I'll show you how I made these mast rings. The masts on this schooner are a 5 8 inch diameter dowel and I looked everywhere for something that I could use for these mast rings. I looked at wood, metal, plastic, nothing seemed to fit right or look right. So I ended up making them myself. On the cutter we've got a 3 quarter inch diameter dowel like this. I wanted my mast ring to be loose enough so that I could put rope in there or cord and tie it and still have the, the mast ring slide up and down. These rings are, are very light and they're an all-natural material. At the dollar store I found this material here in a roll and I think it's used in um, basket making or something something like that. It is uh, kind of a, a natural uh, grass type fiber, sort of a wood fiber. This material has small ribs on it and it's possible to get scissors and cut down every third groove. So you end up with a stranded material like this. It's sort of like flexible wood. Now these strands are about 3 sixteenths of an inch wide. So the way to do this is just do it by hand. And by hand, it's easy. So there's one right there. Now the question is, does it fit? No, it's too big. So here's what you do. You just pull it like that. And notice how they overlap. There's one end here and there's another end there. Try that. That's better. That's close enough. Now with this method you only have to make one that fits. And here's the end. Now don't worry about the inside because it's going to try to expand and get tighter 
we're only concerned about the outside. And right at this point, put some super glue right here. And then put a dab of glue right here on the inside. And here it is. So now to make more rings that are all the same size, make a note of these two spots, the inside and the outside. So here's ring number two. See that? Inside and outside. Looks like about five-eighths of an inch difference. Overlap. So here's all you got to do. Just pull it. So that's about the same overlap here to here. Get the pliers on it and glue it. So if you cut all your strands at the same length, the rings, when they're formed, have to be the same size provided the overlap is the same. You could always check it with the dowel, just about right. So here's the two rings we just made. Now we're going to set them on some plastic. We're going to get some wood glue right here, just a bit, and a brush. And now we're going to put glue all over them. Get the inside, get the outside. Okay, so now you've put glue onto 20 mast rings. Get the plastic, fold it over like that, and put a weight on it. When that wood glue uh, has cured, it's uh, almost transparent, and it's easy to sand the edges. Um, outside and inside. It, it doesn't take much work. You can go flat like this and sand it this way too. And you can stain it or paint it. It works for me. It might work for you. So that brings us to the end of part six. We're fully rigged. We've got a nice suit of sails. So don't miss part seven. We're going to connect the sheet lines, do a few, do a bit of work on the deck, and hopefully we'll be into the first trial sale. Thanks for watching.